Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy, <clears throat> Green Pastures Farm. We're on a beautiful crisp morning here in November. Uh, about, a, let's see, five, five days uh, before we get to, uh, I guess it's six days before we get to the opening day of deer season, which is kind of a big day uh, around this part of the country. Everybody comes to the country. And it's a tradition, you know, you come out and get your winter meat and have time to spend with your friends at the campsite and so we're you know we're we're part of that tradition as well and we don't uh want our cows where we're going to be hunting at and this is one of the hunting farms it's got some really nice deer hunting you see the timber back in here uh, lots of acorns lots of browse and uh just tons of this clover um, we had another landowner last night uh, bow hunting, killed the biggest buck he's ever killed. That's the second one in less than five days. Um, he was just couldn't believe how big this buck was. And it's you know it's it's our clover, it's it's our grazing, it's our it's our management of our uh, browse, uh, the sprouts, um, you know all these hunter landowners that think cattle destroy the environment for, for deer they're just completely off base now i will i will uh say something straight up you put cattle on a farm where there's deer and you don't move them absolutely they're going to graze everything into the dirt there won't be anything left for the deer we don't do that these animals will be moved this morning they're going to be moved again tonight they're only going to be here for about eight to ten hours and they're gone and so that's why we've got this beautiful forage and the rest of the time it's going to be 60 days before we get back here the deer get this okay deer turkey you know squirrels whatever rabbits man we've got rabbits i'm telling you rabbits are just almost extinct but now we've got rabbits i wonder what they're eating clover absolutely we've got some rabbit hats uh over the hill here i build uh quite a few rabbit tats around the farm and <clears throat> rabbit tat is basically uh, three logs you lay on the side and you lay a piece of tin over the logs and the logs need to be about six inches apart eight feet long and you lay the tin over the logs then you build a big brush pile on top of that tin and the rabbits <clears throat> can get in underneath that tin and raise their young the predators can't catch them and the rabbit tat piles need to be about 30 to 50 feet apart. Um, that way a rabbit can outrun a coyote for about 50 feet. And he needs to get into a brush pile. So if you spread your rabbit tats out, and I don't have them up here on top of this hill. They're down there on the side of that hill over there. But uh, they've been there since 2012. And because I put tin over them, the base is still good. In other words, the logs haven't rotted. The brush piles have, have come down a little, but they're still... They're still working in the snow. You can go down there and there's just rabbit tracks everywhere. See, when a, a rabbit, a baby rabbit in the summertime, uh, if he can't get that dew off of him in the morning, he needs a dry place to go in and dust to get that dew off. If he doesn't, he, if he doesn't get the dew off of him, that might be a dead rabbit. I mean, he's going to get pneumonia and die. So you got to have dry places. And really wet times, that's when it's hard on rabbits. They need a good dry place to go in and just chill. But the big logs, that keeps the coyotes from going in and digging them out. They can't move those big logs. And it's just really good habitat for rabbits. Um, people say, well, Greg, why are you talking about rabbits? And you're standing in the herd of those beautiful cows. It all goes together, folks. It all goes together. I like the rabbits. I like our birds. I like the deer. I love our animals, our domestic ones, along with the wild ones. And, you know... As long as you stay focus on and growing good forage, you're going to have a bunch of all of it. And they're all going to be healthy. See, these animals are going after that clover. See that? There's a lot of animals in here. And there's only like, oh, maybe two acres of clover here. And the rest of it's more fescue. So the animals, they're, going to, they're getting the candy right now. They've got to go down the side of this hill here in a minute. And that's going to be pretty much 70-80% fescue. They're eating the candy bars. Look at that. Man, they're going, I mean, that, that grass is tender. See, if you reach down with your hand and pull it, it just, it just comes off like salad. 
just like you bought salad, you know, you went into a greenhouse and picked some salad. Oh, it just comes off so easy. And see, their guts can digest that really quickly, and so they get up and they eat again. Even the little guy out there, he's munching down. But folks, it's all about the soil life, getting carbon on the land, grazing it and leaving it, coming back when it's recovered. Don't come back before it's recovered. We call that eating your seed corn. You're not going to have anything to graze when you come back the next time. Okay? So the cattle will be removed from here. We're, going, we're actually going toward Judy Farm for deer season. Right there close to our house. We've got some open areas. We can keep track of the cows. Keep them out of harm's way. Where people aren't going to be hunting around them. And they can still continue to eat. And be safe and healthy. This is just beautiful. The fall colors are starting to come, you know, they're starting to wane now, but we just had a beautiful fall. See the color in the trees. To me, there's no prettier landscape than in the fall when all the leaves have turned. You've got your green grass and you've got fat, slick cattle. They're not as slick as they were because they all got their winter hair coats on them now. Do y'all hear anything bawling? I don't hear anything. All I hear is rip, 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 rip. And for a grazer, that's just music to your ears. This is a young bull right here. Boy, he's, he's looking pretty good for the winter. Got pretty good uh, flesh covering the top of his back. And uh, he's just, a, he's not even, uh, yeah, he's a yearling. He'd be a yearling. Here's a little heifer, cow, first calf heifer. She's got a calf. But yeah, the, they're, they're doing well in here, folks. And uh, this is what you like to see going into winter. Uh, it's uh, probably five, ten, it's probably ten degrees out of the wind chill. It's pretty nippy. But uh, the cattle don't mind. They've got a winter hair coat on. Everybody thinks you got to put animals in barns. Oh, it's cold outside. they got to go into a barn. Folks, when you put animals into a barn, especially a herd like this, I guarantee you, you're going to have sickness. Because they're all going to get in there. They're going to get hot. They're going to be manure and pee everywhere. They're laying down in it. And you just got a perfect recipe for disease. Keep your animals outside as many days of the year as possible. I realize people live in parts of, uh, you know, maybe Canada or up in Minnesota. It's 40 below zero pretty nice to have a loafing shed or something or at least a, a something break the wind keep the wind off of them but by and far most of the days of the year it's not like that especially here in mid missouri so if you live in a, an area where it doesn't get just brutal cold you don't need to put them in a barn these animals do just fine outside and they're a whole lot happier and healthier outside not stuck in a barn somewhere all right folks this is great judy sign off and everyone have a great day and uh we're enjoying watching the cows eat grass this morning.